I think um, the use of the term storage hypervisor is actually a lot more helpful than referring to it as storage virtualization, because actually there's, there's many different ways to virtualize storage. You could even say that a RAID controller is, is virtualizing storage. It's virtualizing the individual drives in the array. So it's not really descriptive enough uh, in itself to, to call it storage virtualization. If we call it uh, a storage hypervisor, that really uh, helps us understand just how important the role of this function actually is. It's similar, but it's actually handled a little bit differently in that uh, server virtualization, we're typically taking a physical server and dividing it up so that we're running multiple virtual machines on a single physical platform. Uh, so, uh, storage virtualization is actually the other way around. We're taking multiple different arrays and aggregating them into a single platform. So um, the end result is uh, somewhat similar, but the, the approach to it is actually um, from different angles. That's an interesting one, and I think the fact that the, the server virtualization vendors are starting to move down this route, in a sense, validates the approach um, and really shows the, the strength of this as a, as a technical and operational proposition. Um, now, what Datacore can offer is something like 13 years of experience in this area, and uh, in my view, that counts for an awful lot. So they have thousands of customers out there around the world, uh, very happy with these, uh, with this kind of solution, and IDC has interviewed many of them, and uh, in fact, some of the findings from those interviews have gone into a recent paper. Uh, so, you know, th having an, an established, stable, proven solution, that, that does count for a lot. The cost savings can come from a number of different areas. Um, firstly, on the operational side, and that's a big part of the cost of storage, um, the fact that you have a, a single management GUI uh, where you can manage and control and provision um, a whole range of storage arrays that, that are being aggregated to make that storage pool. Um, the fact that you can do all that through a single GUI, that's going to save time and it's going to simplify the whole process of, of managing storage. Uh, so that, that in itself is a major uh, time saver. The performance side of things, it's, it's difficult to make um, generalized observations because clearly there's going to be a whole range of, uh, of outcomes depending on the customer's environment. Um, what Datacore say uh, as a kind of an average expectation, um, which I think is actually realistic, um, is something maybe between 10 and 20 percent. But I believe, and in fact we've seen customers that have experienced significantly bigger um, improvements than that. Um, but uh, I think, um, you know, let's keep things realistic. You, you need to do a test, ideally, in your own environment. That's when you can really see what kind of performance increase um, you're going to get. But the other point that, you, that, that was mentioned was uh, about tiering and the use of SSD. Um, that's, that's a very interesting possibility. Um, we all know that SSD can deliver significant performance increases, but uh, people don't want the, the hassle of trying to figure out which data should go into the SSD, when it should go in and when it should come out. If, uh, you know, if there's uh, extra management burden, then that really offsets the performance uh, boost that you're getting. Uh, so the, the benefit of uh, the data core approach is that that movement of data between tiers is completely automated. So the virtualization engine is figuring out you know, which is the most appropriate data to, to move into SSD and when to move it back out. And uh, so it takes care of that process for you. So that's a level of automation, uh, which is going to be very welcome, I think, to a lot of uh, users. And it really uh, you know, provides a way to use SSD in their system very effectively. It certainly is very helpful to have a single GUI that uh, is used to manage your storage. Um, you really no longer have to be quite so worried about 
proprietary interfaces from a number of different vendors. In fact, uh, the brand of storage that you're using actually becomes somewhat less important. And in fact, one of the benefits of uh, the data core approach, where it's it's actually at the it's that the um, virtualizing engine is at the server layer, in effect, is um, that it's it's kind of there for keeps, um, in that the storage arrays can come and go as the years go by. But that virtualizing engine is always there, so it becomes very easy to remove one storage array and bring another one in, and uh, it doesn't upset the way that the system is managed. The fact that uh, Data Core can apply a common set of um, storage efficiency technologies like thin provisioning across all the arrays in the pool, um, irrespective of whether the array supports that function or not, um, that's a very powerful proposition. So you may have an old array which might be a great workhorse, a really reliable product, but it doesn't have thin provisioning. Well, once you bring it into the pool, you know, the virtualized storage pool, Data Core effectively gives it a thin provisioning capability. So um, that's a, a very effective way of uh, uh, you know, increasing overall efficiency uh, of your storage pool. And again, it, it becomes less important which vendor storage array um, you are using. And so that may lead to cost benefits as well. Data protection is actually uh, one of the most significant parts of, of the, the true whole life cost of storage. And uh, if you have a number of different arrays from different vendors, each tends to have their own arrangements in terms of replication or uh, CDP or some other function it, it may or may not have, you might have a whole range of different data protection capabilities across different arrays. Um, what Data Core allows you to do is to kind of normalize those, is to have a common set of data protection methodologies which you can apply in a consistent way across all the arrays in the storage pool. So again, that's all about you know, consistency, simplicity, uh, longevity, you know, keeping that data, the same data protection process going over a period of time, even if the underlying arrays in the pool are changing. Uh, that, that's a benefit. I think it actually does make sense to regard uh, storage virtualization as being one of the, the fundamental building blocks of a, of a dynamic IT infrastructure. So, you know, the, uh, the growth of server virtualization and, and desktop virtualization actually brings a number of challenges on the storage side. And really what you want is the most flexible and efficient storage that you can possibly set up, the, mo the most effective that you can afford. And storage virtualization is really the way to do that. So, uh, you know, server virtualization and desktop virtualization, they bring, you know, new challenges in terms of, of I.O., for example, kind of boot storms that you can expect, uh, you know, everybody logs on in the morning and, and expects their desktop to be delivered. Uh, you've got to have a pretty well sorted uh, storage back end uh, to support that. And uh, storage virtualization is actually a very powerful way of managing your storage and, and giving you the flexibility to deal with those kind of challenges. In fact, there's efficiency benefits on, on both sides. So um, operationally, it typically takes um, a lot less effort to manage a single pool of storage. You're not dealing with multiple GUIs, multiple user interfaces, perhaps one for each storage array uh, or for a different vendor, a range of different vendors. Uh, but there's also a uh, great many efficiency benefits uh, that come from the technology itself. Um, the fact that you're bringing all the storage together and then provisioning out chunks of that to applications, uh, for a start that gives you the potential to have a much higher level of utilization. Uh, you're really uh, going to be able to eliminate a lot of that stranded storage that you might see when there's multiple different arrays. 
Um, it's also um, much easier to, to protect the volume you know, as a single entity. You can replicate the whole thing. Um, uh, data protection becomes a great deal easier. Provisioning is, is more straightforward. Um, I.O. problems actually become less of an issue because uh, uh, storage virtualization often delivers I.O. benefits. That's not something that might be uh, intuitive, but uh, uh, in fact, there's generally caching in the virtualization engine that's delivering maybe 10 or 15 percent boost in I.O. performance. So there's actually efficiency benefits to be had in a number of different areas.